and they make a great dance floor. <laughs> so I have never done exactly what we're doing here. In my mind, I've gone through it a bunch of times. <laughs> he has a, all sorts of special effects. Smoke, make him look all cool. <laughs> Travel's arrived perfectly on time, which is great to see. All we have to do is get the rest of the material down inside the aqua box, and then we're gonna start to install that stuff. All sorts of special effects. Smoke, make him look all cool. This guy's got all the tricks. A little slow-mo action, you know, you gotta, you gotta work with it. So Adrian, we're kind of at that critical point. We have the infrastructure in place. So we worked all day long, got the membrane in place. We put all of these geotextile felts. We put in the water distribution system. But what I wanna do is kind of explain it to you as well as all the viewers, because most people don't see this stuff. Yeah. When you're looking at a project, you see the finished result of all this beautiful aquatic plants, but you're like, you have no idea. All the layers, all the thought that goes into all this stuff underneath. And I think it's very important for the long-term understanding of this. What's happening here is we have water coming in from our piping system, starting down by the pond. High velocity water comes in, the water slows down. So it exits there from that thinner tube. Correct. Into this. Into this big batter. giant one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have these specially sized openings in between to allow a specific flow rate of water out. We have a reduction in velocity to get rid of the big sediments. And the reason we wanna do that is Filter media works better when it's somewhat dirty, but not clogged. We're trying to get a biofilm on it. So the biological filter, the whole thing is it's a colony of microorganisms. We're creating the structure, the space for them to actually colonize, but we don't want to gum it up with like sand and mud and stuff like that. So we want dissolved organic compounds, but not visible ones. Because if it gums it up, then they suffer. We have the water coming in and then it's gonna spread itself out through all of these blocks. With all these little openings and things, the water is constantly being mixed. It's mimicking a natural river system. The team behind us right now, they're starting to install all that three to five inch gravel and we have to put approximately a 12 inches layer of that. And then we're gonna go down to smaller and smaller gravel and then the top layer is gonna be all the different types of aquatic plants. So, so this is designed to mimic nature, so it like churns water and mm -hmm. distributes it, it makes it turn into eddies and stuff like that? That's exactly what it does. And then that big vertical stack behind you has a lid on it. So once a year, you're gonna open that up, put a pump inside, and you're gonna remove all the sediments. So you're gonna back flush all of this. It's a nutrient-rich water solution that you could use for irrigation around the pump entire property. That's all you really need to do to maintain this? Do you, do you ever have to get in here and take these I have. We designed this over 20 years ago, and I have projects in the ground 20 plus years old. Some of our original prototypes, and all with routine maintenance and cleaning, years of operation. And they make a great dance floor. <laughs> you didn't know that. Did I you? did not know that. <laughs> hey, we'll have to add that to the marketing pieces. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to do somewhat of a unique component here of this project. And actually, I have never done exactly what we're doing here. So fingers crossed it's gonna work. But in my mind, I've gone through it a bunch of times. Ever since I came out here originally, started looking at this and coming up with the plan. So let me back up one second. Earlier, we talked about that pump flow rate. Normally for a pound of this size, to do this wetland, we would have needed four pumps. Because of Adrian and Jordan's environmental stance, we're trying to deliver the best water quality, optimal water flow, highest amount of filtration with the lowest energy consumption to offset the carbon footprint. Instead of doing four pumps, cut it in half, and we did two pumps. What we have happening is we're gonna have 
those two pumps sending water up to our snorkel and centipede here. What's going to happen now, do a quick sketch here. So we have our wetland. So this is that little trough that we dug down in the bottom. We have our centipede down here. Aqua blocks here. Remember we used the large ones here for that sedimentation chamber. Water is going to come in from the end of this and the water is going to get dispersed up through the different layers of the river rocks. And then it's going to breach up here and the water's gonna start flowing in this direction. Now we also remember, we're gonna have aquatic plants and vegetation inside of here. All those roots are gonna go down inside of the gravel bed. That's where that magic happens. The roots meet the river stone. We have a lot of biological activity. Then the water's gonna come this way and we're gonna have another snorkel centipede system over on this side. And the water's gonna go down through everything on this side. The area for the palapia, the pond kind of pitches a little bit. We have our aqua blocks coming across. We have river rock on top and the water levels way up here. So now water's going to go down this way into here. Now this is the funky part. Our big snorkel vault over on this side. The vertical stack coming up. Inside of here I am going to do a connection. I'm going to have a flange connecting to the rubber liner and we have this elbow coming out. So this is all four inch. And then it's going to open up to a six inch pipe up here. And then this six inch pipe is going to come all the way up to water level. Water is going to flow this way. The water has to go down through all the river stone. It's going to have to go through the aqua blocks. And it's going to go into the centipede module. It's going to go into this vault on this side. Water then has to flow up. So it's going to want to stabilize. And then it's going to flow down through this and then it's going to go into an entirely new wetland filter again it's kind of a funky setup so doing this little line drawing hopefully made sense here's what some of these pieces are going to look like this big transition piece is this guy here that flange this is going to be the piece that actually bolts inside of the snorkel and if you look here what i did we actually cut the opening here for this pipe we're going to be able to bolt the liner directly to the back of this this is going to create a watertight seal and it's going to continue with our four inch plumbing the reason i want to show you this here is once it's installed inside of there we're never going to be able to see this so now i'm going to have a big six inch pipe coming up not going to glue that pipe in place so what we're going to do is we're just going to dry set it inside of here so that way whenever they want to do maintenance or if they want to harvest the fish what they're going to do is just pop this thing and all the water will siphon out and all the fish will kind of be left down in the bottom in shallow water where they can come in and they could just scoop everything else. So I'm trying to think of all these different processes through the entire setup to make it as easy as possible for them to maintain everything. As you can see the guys behind me right now, they're coming in with the fabrics, laying it over the membrane. We're going to start assembling everything. Chris just completed that trough that's going right from the back of this unit to the new wetland. All this is gonna flow by gravity. So what I love about this is only two pumps, but we get double the filtration. So we're cutting energy consumption in half, we're cutting everything down, we're making everything a little bit more streamlined. The only way we could make this work is because of the elevation change, which I love, but it also came to fight with us yesterday in the past couple days. Because of that elevation change, the one wetland is at a lower elevation. When we were digging, that's when we had all that groundwater. So we came up with a good plan, but it came back to cause problems for us. But in the long run, I know it's gonna be worth it because we're putting all these different things in place. And I just love the different elevations. It's gonna be transitioning down plus I love trying new stuff. So this is a completely new design. I'm looking forward to doing it on future projects. Once we get it dialed in, we're gonna to continue to fine tune it, find out if we have any challenges with it, and we can make modifications moving forward. But I do believe because of that elevation change difference, we should be in great shape. And then from that far wetland, it's gonna overflow directly back into the ravine where all the springs are located. So we're just gonna have this beautiful cycling of all the water throughout this entire setup. Really, really cool project. I love working with Adrian and his wife just because they have tons of ideas. They have tons of energy. They are looking at things with a completely fresh perspective which is exactly what I love as well because they're out there to make a difference in the world and it starts with water. What we're working on right now is we're fine tuning the pump flow rate. When I was originally out here, we had some rough measurements that Adrian gave me. I just want to double check all that stuff because now's the actual time for us to make any modifications. I came up with a two pump system because that gives us a redundancy factor. So that means if there's some sort of a mechanical issue, if there's a pump that fails, these things happen. I want to make sure that I still have one pump operational. We want to have the highest flow rate of water possible from a sustainability standpoint, the least amount of electrical consumption, but we also have to have the proper flow rate going through everything. Our target is a 
approximately 100 gallons per hour per aqua buck. That equates to 1,500 GPH per centipede, and we have six of those. Our target rate on the low end is 4,500 gallons per hour. On the high end, it's 6,000 gallons per hour. So Trevor right now is gonna get some measurements for us. We also just measured the outside perimeter to see our pump run, and now we're gonna plug it into the calculator to see exactly what we'll come up with. All right, Trevor, what do you got? Five and a half. 65.5 inches, five and a half feet. We're measuring the water level here and then all the way down to the top of the water level on the main pond, which was an additional nine feet. So 5.5 plus nine. So we're at 14.45 feet. We're gonna take this information, plug it into the calculator. So I'm gonna pull that up. I have a total dynamic head calculator. Our target flow rate is 100 gallons per minute, which equates to 6,000 gallons per hour on the high end. So I'm gonna start with that first. Plug in 100. Pipe diameter we're using is three inch. Pipe length 240 and elevation we said 14.5. So now we're just gonna hit total dynamic head 20.15 feet. Total dynamic head is basically the pressure that is put on the pumping system because of the velocity of the water going through the pipe itself. And now we have our little checklist over here. It tells us all different types of in unique information, but the pump that we want to use is this one right here, a 9PL7000. If we come over here and you see where that 20's at, we're gonna bring it all the way down and we're coming right up to about 4,900 gallons per hour, which is kind of in between those two numbers I just gave. So 6,000 gallons per hour is way over here. The reason this is important, see the dark green, it says best operating zone. So when you are setting up a pump, you wanna make sure that you're operating in that proper operating zone, because if you're on the left or right, that means you're having too much flow or too little flow, which is not good for a pump. All pumps have an operating zone where they're gonna be the best in. And if you can get it in between those two numbers, you're gonna have the longest operation possible as well as the optimal water flow. So I think we nailed it. I think the nine fields are gonna be perfect for us. If you're looking for more detailed information for all of this type of stuff, we have tons of resources available. Actually, Trevor right over there is part of our tech team. So he is able to answer all these questions and assist you with that. that is one option. Another one is we have what's called Aquascape University, where we have detailed information on understanding all the dynamics that happen inside of a pumping system, wetland filtration, intake systems, pre-filters, you name it, we have more stuff than you could think of. Then we also have our entire vlog series, and we have Aquascape Academies, which are hands-on training, which actually this project right here is gonna be part of a training system that we're gonna be doing later on, probably in about a month from now. We just installed the rubber liner, the fabric and all that stuff. Remember, we had all this drainage issue underneath. It did change our plans, actually by about four to six inches, unfortunately. We had to raise the bottom up. We're using crushed stone. This is a clear material. It's a three-quarter clear known as CA7, allows water to flow through it. So we have this layer of this clear stone on the bottom. We have our membranes on top of that. We have all this water getting backed up. And what it's doing is it's kind of buckling up our centipedes. We then came over the top of that because of the groundwater, we're piling up all these cobblestones on either side of the centipede module to hold that in place to have weight on it. Everything wants to float up. Trevor just turned the water on to get more positive pressure inside of there but what it's doing is it's forcing more water out of here and it's gonna buckle this entire wall. So what we did, we put in a drainage pipe, perforated drainage pipe on the bottom inside of that trough. We're gonna dump some more of the clear stone around it to create a solid jacket to allow all this water to flow to go through, but we have to create a wall, a structural wall on this backside in order for us to keep moving forward. All right, Chris, let's dump it. 